Generate Blocks 1.7 reworks the whole layout system in Generate Blocks to incorporate Flexbox. And while on the surface, this might seem like a bit of a shocking update, it actually is a long-term benefit because of the power that Flexbox brings. So now we can easily build things like sidebar layouts, nested columns and rows, and much more without having to add grid upon grid in your layout. Not only that, but we get the other goodies that Flex brings like grid gap, flex reverse, and more. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick crash course to understanding the primary flex controls and some of the other features you won't want to miss in this upcoming 1.7 update. Now I want to make it clear that what I'm using is pre-alpha version of Generate Blocks 1.7 so things might change between now and then but what will still apply is all of the core flex principles and the features we're talking about are definitely still going to be there in one form or another. Prior to Generate Blocks 1.7 when you added a container to your page you also got a hidden inner container that made it quite difficult when it came to styling because you were actually fighting against two different divs on the front end. While a single extra div is not going to make or break your site, adding in an extra div every single time you add in a container, of course, doubles the number of divs, so it's just a nice performance and sort of usability tweak to have this better optimized. In addition to that, when you create a container, it's automatically full width. If you want that inner container, you can do that with a single click, and what happens is that inner container has a use global max width toggle automatically turned on, and that container is automatically centered for you by using a margin left and right auto. Another huge piece of this update is that there's a whole new section in your right hand sidebar called the sizing panel. This section gives us two really useful features that I find myself using very often, which is minimum height and maximum width. And you're gonna find yourself using these super often as well. These sizing controls can be found on nearly every component now in Generate Blocks from containers to headings and buttons and so on. Min height is really handy, for example, like in a hero section where you wanna set the height to 50 VH and you don't have to do that by fibbing with margin and padding anymore. Now it's just built right in. Another really common example of using minimum height is if you're building out cards and you have images that might end up being varying sizes, you can use a minimum height to make sure that they all at least fit into the same aspect ratio. Max width is fantastic when you want to limit the width of a specific element. And I often do this with headlines where perhaps the headline is going to be quite long. So I don't want it to stretch to the bounds of my page. I don't have to use a grid anymore to kind of restrict the elements width. I also use this really commonly on contact forms because I almost never want those to be the full width of the page. Instead, I might want to set them to like 540 pixels or maybe 768 pixels, something along those lines. I can just pop the max width parameter on and I'm done. You might have already noticed that as I type in units, it's automatically selecting those for me now, which is great. So instead of me having to type 100 and click the percentage option, now I can just type 100% on my keyboard and the unit is automatically selected for me. Super handy. Lastly, a feature that I think is a little bit subdued but perhaps will be brought more to the forefront is margin auto. This super handy feature allows you to position an element or specifically center an element by simply typing in the word auto to the margin blocks. We can center our gravity form by just simply typing auto in both margin left and margin right. In this pre-alpha version, some of the elements in the back end aren't centering properly, but they are working on the front end, so I'm sure that will be fixed fully in the actual alpha release. The flexbox options now present in 1.7 give you an unparalleled level level of control over the content on your site. No longer are we having to nest grids inside of each other to achieve the layouts that we want. Flex has a ton of control, so I'm gonna build some example layouts to show you how this works in practice. If you're an owner of my Generate Made Easy course, I'm gonna be doing a full site build with these Flexbox controls as soon as the alpha is publicly released. If you don't already have Generate Made Easy, click that link in the description below and you'll be taken straight to the course page. Now here I am with the container selected and I've gone ahead and minimized the new spacing section so you can see see the updated layout controls. The first thing we need to decide is what type of display that we want, and in almost every case, we're going to use flex. As you can see, there are numerous options in that dropdown, but for the most part, I'm pretty much gonna stick to flex in every single case. All the other options have some kind of nuance that to me don't really add any value, so we're gonna stick to flex. Next up, we wanna go ahead and add a few containers inside of our parent container so our flex controls actually do something. In this case, we're gonna add two containers, and I'm going to set each of these to a 50% width. Then in our right container, I'm actually going to add three more containers and I'm going to give those a background color so we can actually see what's happening as we manipulate some of the flex controls coming up. Next up, we need to choose how we want our parent container to actually behave. We need to set its flex direction and our choices are column or row. So we're going to go ahead and select row for now. One thing I want to point out is that what you're actually doing here is 
configuring the CSS on the front end. So you now have the display flex and the flex direction of row set on these elements. So under the hood, you are actually clicking the buttons that are corresponding to CSS on the front end. And I think that's important for you because you are almost writing CSS. So it's very valuable for you to know that. Align items is the control that allows you to position elements in your container based on your flex direction. Your options are start, center, end, stretch, and baseline. And these will adjust the orientation based on your selection of flex direction, column, or row. The graphic representations of the choices, as you can see, make it really easy to follow. Justify content controls the spacing between and around items inside of your container. To better demonstrate in this example, I've gone ahead and reduced our two divs to 35% width down from the 50% width that we set earlier. This setting allows you to push all the children inside a container to one edge, give even space between them, or apply even spacing on all sides, all entirely automatically with one click. Flex wrap is an extremely useful parameter, especially when you're working with a flex direction of column and your containers add up to more than 100% width because this allows your containers to break out to new lines. This is actually exactly how the grid element in Generate Blocks behaves. It just simply enables the grid containers to drop to a new line if it adds up to more than 100% width. For me, the most painful missing feature out of everything in Generate Blocks was the lack of gap controls. And now that it's here, I'm super thrilled about it. Gap automatically adds gutter between rows and columns, so you don't have to worry about margin or padding. This makes rearranging content with variable spacing a breeze because there's nothing to adjust after you rearrange your content it's still spaced properly. Now you can super easily define the gap that you want in both the horizontal and vertical axis. And I think you're probably gonna wonder how you ever lived without gap because I thought the same thing when I first started using it as well. As you can see, these flex controls are gonna bring a whole new slew of features and possibilities to you when you're working on your sites. It will take you some time to get your head wrapped around it and that's totally okay. I would try encouraging you to build some example layouts that you see online. This is one of those cases where there's simply no better way to learn than getting that first-hand experience and muscle memory down pat. Eventually you're going to get to the point where you almost see the Flexbox layout happening on a site without even inspecting it. You can just look at it and you'll know how this Flexbox layout is put together. And that's honestly really cool to see kind of the skeleton of the site from a structural perspective. Let me know what you think of this Flex update. Are you worried it's going to be too complicated? Are you excited? Drop a comment and let me know below. I personally am really excited and of course there's going to be a ton more content to come. I'll also be covering all of this far more in depth inside Generate Made Easy, so make sure you're a member there. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.